Hello there, my name is Tiernan and I am here with Ransom Riggs, author of Hollow City, sequel to Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. And we are going to talk about Hollow City and his writing and everything else. After all the success of the first novel in the series, was it like difficult to sit back down and write Hollow City? Like, did you feel pressured? I didn't feel pressure from uh, fans or anything, but I... I'm kind of my own harshest critic, mm -hmm. so I, I felt a lot of pressure from myself. Like to make it as good or better? Yeah, and I just, well, just interesting. Yeah. yeah. Like good or bad, eh, I just want it to be interesting. Mm -hmm. So when you finished the first one, did you know what was going to happen next? No. Like you had no idea? No. You were just like, they sail off and then... I didn't know that I would be allowed to write a second book. Mm -hmm. So I was hoping by <laughs> making this open ending to the first one that they'd be like, we have to do it. Like, yeah. I tried a lot of different things, threw a lot of stuff away, started over many times, and that's kind of why it took two years. Mm -hmm. So what kind of things can readers expect in Hollow City after the big ending in Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children? So the kids uh, sail off into the sunrise, and um, well, in Miss Peregrine, we really only ever discover one loop, one group of uh, peculiar children, mm -hmm. one imprint. So you know the world is out there, but you, we've only seen a little sliver of it. So Hollow City was my opportunity to explore the world, find other loops, other times, more peculiar children, and adults, and animals, um, and uh, there's a, a lot more danger and uh, terrible creatures and, and sticky situations, and um, you know, suddenly their, protect, their, their protector is, um, is hurting. She's stuck in the form of a bird, and uh, they have to fill that leadership vacuum. They're really cast out of the nest. Yeah. They have to um, come into their own and, and uh, save their embryo. So do you have a structure to how you write, or like a certain daily routine that you make yourself go through to get a certain amount of words or pages done? Coffee. Coffee. I try, I'm not the most prolific or fastest writer in the world. Um, I try and get about 1,500 words a day, yeah, and it will take me all 10 hours of the you know writing day to get that many words. Mm -hmm. So I get up, take a shower, drink some coffee, write, eat breakfast, write, take a walk, write, have some more coffee, have lunch, write. So with the vintage photographs that you have in your book and you find them at flea markets and stuff, Right. Do you have an idea for a character and then you go looking for a picture that could represent them? Or do you like see a picture and you're like, oh, then you come up with the character? In the beginning, it was very much like I have these photos and I need to make a book out of them. Mm -hmm. So I, I was finding what I needed from, you know, the pictures themselves would suggest characters. Like, yeah. here's a boy who's covered in bees. So I should make a character, perhaps, that controls the bees. Yeah. But the story really had a lot of its own momentum in book two, so much more often I would come up across a scene or a character that I knew needed to exist um, and I'd have to go looking for photos that would represent them. So you said on Twitter that there would be a third book, so do you know if it's going to be a trilogy or something that's ongoing? A trilogy is what we have planned. I'm not planning to like uh, destroy the world or anything at the end of yeah. the third book, so you know, the story arc that was started in book one will finish. Mm -hmm. But it the world will on. the world will continue, and the characters yeah. will continue. I mean, you know, I don't know that everyone's going to get out alive, mm -hmm. but I can say no more. All right. So I'm curious as to who were your inspirations early on for writing? Like, who? What authors did you really look up to as a child and becoming a writer yourself? I really loved um, the Chronicles of Narnia mm -hmm. and Stephen King. So this is sort of the un unholy child. Yeah. <laughs> those two influences. So I'm about to ask the most generic question possible for an author. So are you ready? Okay. okay. Where did you come up with the idea for Miss Peregrine's? That's like a pretty relevant initial... question for this series, because yeah. it's like, what the hell? Yeah. Um, Translation, what's wrong with you? Well, that's a long answer. Um, <laughs> that's a whole conversation, Tiernan. The photos are really where it came from. I found, yeah. I started finding these old photos um, long before the book was was even a twinkle in my eye. When I had a, a pile of them that were just creeping, creeping me out so much that I needed to do something with them to exercise them from my nightmares, I, I, I brought them to my editor at Court Books, uh, with whom I'd done a nonfiction book about Sherlock Holmes. We developed uh, an idea for a novel. So did you always want to be a writer or an author when you were growing up, or was it something that just came to you like recently? When I was a kid, I wanted to be nothing but a writer. And I wrote short stories and uh, novellas and stuff, longhand and on typewriters growing up. And then in middle school, I discovered film. 
and I fell in love with movies, and I wanted to be a director, and I decided I was going to go to film school. Um, and I did. I went to undergrad um, for English, but then I went to graduate film school. It was only after film school, when I was trying to make it in Hollywood and do the thing, that uh, I, I got an opportunity to write a novel, and I was like, I always wanted to do that, yeah. And I sort of rediscovered the, the, the dream I'd had as a kid. So I took a long time to come back around yeah. to it, but yeah, I've always wanted to do this. So then what is one piece of advice that you would give to young readers who want to be writers? I think, I wish fan fiction had existed when I was a kid, and the internet, because that seems like a really great way to get started um, and develop your skills a lot. Um, and just write, and don't judge yourself too much. Yeah. The, I think writer's block comes from judging your own writing. You know, yeah. you just sit and feel free and write, you'll do fine. But if you're sitting there going, am I any good? I don't know if that's any good. Is this idea bad? Then you'll get all mucked up. Were you rooting for a Miss Peregrine's movie? And did you have like a dream cast? I think every author roots for their book to become a movie. So yeah. it was really awesome when it, it, it happened. Well, it hasn't happened yet, but it's happening. It is um, happening. Cross your fingers. Do the cross your yeah. fingers dance. Kind of like a book shimmy. And I, I don't really have a dream cast because I feel like well, a lot of the actors are would be under 18, and I don't know that many. I need the internet's help to tell me like who's cool and like 16 and an actor these days, because yeah. I don't really know. Also, you know, they're actually going to cast real people in this movie, and if yeah. it's not the same people that I said I wanted, I don't want them to feel like I'm disappointed or something. Yeah. So I'm doing a giveaway for a copy of Hollow City, which he just signed. So if you want to enter this, all of the details will be in the description. You just have to follow us on Twitter, tweet this video, do hashtag Hollow City and hashtag the booktuber so I can find you. That's really annoying. I get the air conditioning. Ignore that. Before we go, uh, do you think you should just like, sign this? Sure. Yeah, I'll sign, yeah, I'll sign anything. anything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just, what am I signing? Just send it back to me. Am I allowed to read this? Yeah. Is this an adoption form? What? What? Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to Ransom Riggs and everyone at Quirk Books for making this video possible and Anderson's Bookshop in Naperville for providing the location. And thanks to all of you especially for watching my videos and helping me make things like this happen. So I did my first author interview and if you didn't understand the ending, I know like half of people watching this probably won't. He and his wife have a YouTube channel and they're really awesome. People are always like, will you adopt me? And people on Twitter to them are always like, will you please adopt me? So it was a joke. It was a joke. All of the information you need for the giveaway is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon with a Hollow City review. Bye!